Hello, my name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about a, a recent paper published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. This paper, um, from a group in Boston, examined their experience of trying to differentiate between celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivity in a group of over 200 patients that they saw. And these were patients who had had incomplete or no testing for celiac disease before starting on a gluten-free diet. And what they found was interesting and instructive. Patients who had symptoms of malabsorption, patients who were deficient in certain nutrients, had a family history of celiac disease, or a history of autoimmune disease, were much more likely to have celiac disease than patients who lacked any of those features. Patients who had some blood testing for celiac disease done before going on a gluten-free diet, if their tests were positive, this was usually a strong indicator of the presence of celiac disease, especially if the test results were very high or more than twice the upper limit of normal. Whereas patients who lacked those features or lacked the antibody tests were much less likely to have celiac disease. They also point out the usefulness of genetic testing in patients who have some of the features of celiac disease or possibly blood tests that are borderline or weak positive, that doing genetic testing might be helpful to help select out those patients who need further testing and those who do not. This points out the importance of being tested for celiac disease before going gluten-free. Um, it's a lot easier to test before gluten is removed from the diet and to do the right tests, completing either confirmation or ruling out of celiac disease before trying a gluten-free diet. Thank you.